family. I, I love what the psalmist said in, in the book of Psalms. The psalmist wrote and it said that as the deer pants for the water, my, my soul thirsts for you. And as we're singing the song, family, I, I believe with all my heart that this is a call from a desert place. That you can be in seasons of your life. This is, this is not a call from the mountaintop. Come on, somebody. But this is a call when you're walking through the valley and you have to remind yourself that, that even though I'm in the valley and I'm calling to my father, his ear even goes down to the deepest place. That he, he's such a good, good, good father that his, the word says that he turns his ear towards my mouth. And it doesn't matter the iniquity. Come on, somebody. It doesn't matter the sin. It, it doesn't matter the damaged goods that we can perceive even on ourselves. It, it doesn't matter the situation. He's a father that always turns his ear towards his kid. See, I, I, I feel the anointing in here to speak against the enemy that keeps speaking to you. The enemy that keeps waking you up at 2 a.m. and the enemy is speaking another message. But I'm here to remind you as your pastor that your father still adores you and he's turning his ear towards you. And here's what the father is saying. If you would just call, I will answer. If you would just yell out to me, I will answer. If you would give me your heart, I will answer. Is there anybody in here that's calling out right now? Just give them your heart. Even where you find yourself, call out. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, God. It feels good in here, family. It feels good. Are you ready for the word? Come on, praise and worship. Now it's time to eat, family. Come on, can we put our hands together for our amazing worship team? If you don't mind, just stay standing. Go ahead and turn to Genesis 16. I'm going to dismiss our celebration youth, middle and in high school. Your amazing leaders are right there in the back. Family, do me a huge a huge favor. Come on, can we welcome in our online audience? Come on. Thank you guys so much for joining us and worshiping with us. Come on, you are family. Come on. But there's a word in here today. Are you ready to eat, family? Come on. Super Bowl Sunday, but we're getting ready to eat right now. Come on. I hope you're enjoying this relationship series. We talked about friendship um, this last Sunday. But today, come on, we're going to be talking about marriages. We're going to be talking about dating. Come on, just look over to your significant other, whether they're here, just nudge them, say, hey, get ready, because the Holy Spirit is coming for you. Come on. <laughs> now, we're, we're going to have a great time and been excited just unpacking this message for a couple weeks and, and diving into it. I, I really believe God is getting ready to speak to us in a mighty way. Love you guys so much. Genesis 16, verse 1. Ooh, this is a text right here. Now Sarah, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. He had a female Egyptian servant who ser whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said to Abram, Behold, now the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my, my servant. Let, let me just back up real quick. You ever been in a season of your life where you feel as though that you're not producing in the area that you should be producing in. I want to go there because sometimes in, in seasons of being married, come on, me and Pastor Brett, we're, we're, we're 17 years in. I know we don't look like it. We got married when we was two. But there are seasons in our marriage where it feels as though we're not producing in the area that we should be producing in. Abraham and Sarah find themselves in a particular spot where, where she's saying, go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And, and Abraham listened to the voice of Sarah. So, so 
after Abraham had lived 10 years in the land of Canaan, Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the, the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to, to Abram, her husband, as a wife. I, I, I'm sorry, family. I, I, I got to pause real quick because I remember growing up and, and watching my grandmother watch soap operas. But you ever read, read the Bible and you just want to grab your popcorn and like, this is some good stuff right here. Because you don't need no reality TV. You can just go right to the scriptures. You can, you can forget about the reality housewives right now. This is some drama right here. And I'm just thinking, Sarah, did, did, did Sarah is not like my wife, Brenda. <laughs> Sarah is nothing like your wife, Julius. Come on. So as we read, and, 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 and what blows my mind, I just, I'm going to unpack it a little bit because literally in two to three scriptures, Sarah spoke and Ab Abraham followed. And, and it, 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 it has me in a space right now where I'm, I'm thinking because the scriptures doesn't do us a little bit of justice right here. Where, where's the details? I'm, I'm asking a guy like, God, what's the type of conversation they had around this? And it had to have been a longer conversation than that. Oh, come on, can we go there this morning? Because you're telling me to go with another woman? Are you sure? Is this a setup? Or is this a trick question? What is really going on right here? What's the con what does the conversation look like? And here's what hit me. Because here's what hit me. Sometimes we can be so in a desperate situation. As couples, we don't take time to unpack the real damage. So out of desperation, we're, we're, looking to, to, we're looking to manufacture a blessing in our life that only God can produce. And then we become blind. We become blind to the situation, and we begin to create solutions that only that God can do for your marriages. So now we all chasing other, other issues, and now other issues are rising up in our marriage all through desperation. And we, we would just take our time and sit with one another. I just wonder, did Abraham and Sarah sit with one another? The scripture doesn't show us that. Can, can, can I just take you into my mind when I'm going to read in the scripture? Because the scripture doesn't show us the conversation. The, the, the scripture doesn't show us the, the response of Abraham. The, the scripture doesn't show us, did Abraham as a husband ask better questions? The, the scripture doesn't show us, did, did Sarah really reveal the trueness of her heart? The pain, the damage that she has been walking through? Did she really reveal the trueness or did she just speak from a superficial level? When we speak from a superficial level, we get superficial answers. I just wonder, I just wonder, I just wonder. Verse 4 says this, And he went into Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. And Sarah said to Abram, may the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to you, to your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarah, behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarah dealt harshly with her and she fled from her. Oh, where, what's the convert? What did the conversation look like? And, and here's my message title to you today, family. There, there are four words that sometimes gets me uncomfortable in my own marriage. When I get that text or when I get that call and it goes a little bit of something like this, hey, can we talk? Hey, just say it with me. Don't leave me out here by myself, fellas. Hey, can we talk? 
My whole day is messed up. I, I'm just thinking. I'm just on the edge. What could it be, Julie? I, did, what did I do wrong? Did I, did I didn't wash the dishes right? Did I say something wrong? Hey, can we talk? My message is titled for today. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you as we begin to dive deeper into your words. Your word says that it's sharper than a two-edged sword. It goes so deep, it begins to go between the bone and the marrow, and it's going to hit a place that we, can't, we don't even know that it can hit. Speak your word to us right now, Father. We're hungry, we're thirsty for more. Speak a word that's going to make us better than we even came in today. Feed us like you have never fed us before. It is in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. You can go ahead and have your seats, family. Before we jump into it, come on, are you excited for Equip Night coming on this coming Thursday? Come on, for all of my marriages, and hey, maybe you're single, maybe you're, you're dating, you're in a relationship, or maybe, hey, maybe you're walking through a season of divorce. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this coming Thursday. The information is right on the screen for our online family. The link is right there. Please make sure you, you sign up. Me and Pastor Brendan, we've, we've been preparing for our first equip night of the year. And our heart family, this is one of our big prayers for 2023, that we want to be in a position as a church to equip you so that you can execute and walk out the calling that God has on your life, family. It's going to be awesome. This coming Thursday, the 16th at 7 p.m. online. Family, the story of Abraham is a beautiful story. I love, this is an interesting one because if you look at the story of Abraham and Sarah, this is now, come on, God called Abraham out of a familiar place to leave a familiar place and go into an unknown territory. But a lot of times when we look at this text, we just focus in on Abraham and not realizing that when God called Abraham, he also called Sarah. And these are two individuals who's on a journey of trusting God. They are on a journey of, of, of coming together and walking out the calling that God has for their life. Can you imagine the conversations on this journey? See, sometimes we can just read it as though they just got in their, their vehicle and drove over to Springfield Mall. No, they were on a journey of days and miles. Can you imagine the road trip, Julius, of the conversations of one another? I know Sarah has some, can't, hey, Abraham, can't we talk? Can we talk about the way you treated me last night, Abraham? Can, can, can we talk, Abraham? And as they're on this journey, and this is a beautiful thing because the same thing for as merged couple, we, we're on a journey together. And, and we're on a journey together, and we're walking, and we're doing life, and, and sometimes, sometimes it can get a little bit heavy in marriages. See, I, I, I love this point of the story because it, it, it reminds me that even in seasons of uncertainty, here this family, our indifferences can shine the most. And what I'm learning even more now being Murray, it's, it's, not, it's not that Murray just lasts, but because of capability. No, 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 no. Murray just lasts because the spouses learn how to learn each other's indifference. See, watch this. When you first started dating, it was all the conversation was all about our, our capability. How do we come together? Oh, your favorite color is blue? Oh, my favorite color is blue, too. Oh, you like going to, going to movies? Oh, that's my favorite genre of movie. When you first come together, a lot of your conversations are about the things that attract you. But as you begin to grow, come on, somebody. As you get to year one and year five and year ten, most of your conversations are not about what brings you together. Most of your conversations are about what brings you apart. But how you handle those conversations through health makes your marriage last even longer. How you deal, dealing with the differences that's in your life. These are two, these, I, I want to paint the story before I go in because I want you to catch that what the scriptures sometimes don't show us, that they're on a journey together and I'm pretty sure they were having conversations about the things that bring them apart. So they're on a journey real quick. Hey, Julius, br br bring me the water real quick. And I, I caught this image in my head because they're, they're, they're sitting there and, and these jugs can be heavy after a while. Oh, come on. 
It, it would be very strange for me to sit up here and preach an entire message with water jugs in my hand. Come on. Right now, I'm focused in on you, and I can, I can preach it pretty good, and I, I understand my text, and I understand my next point, but probably after a minute, Julius, these water jugs are going to get pretty heavy, and then I'm just going to be talking to you, but I'm really not focused on you. I'm focused on the weight that I'm carrying you. And so a lot of times, we, we, we can live out our, our, our marriage just like this. We're carrying the weight, but we're focused on the weight, and we're not focused on our spouse. And so now we're, we're, we're walking with the weight. Come on, somebody, go there with me. We're, 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 we're carrying the weight of the relationship. We're carrying the weight of raising these kids. Come on, somebody. We're carrying the weight of the indifference of how do we budget to the finance book? How do I go after my degree? We're carrying the weight, and now we're having conversations with one another, but we're not focused on one another. We're focused on the weight, the weight, the weight, the weight. Say that with me, the weight, the weight, the weight, the weight, the weight. And now you can be in a season where you don't know Watch this. You don't know. You're confused. You don't know if you're getting stronger or you're getting tired. See, you, if you carry something long enough, it can be very confusing. Is this making me strong or is this actually breaking me? And now I, I, I have the picture in my head because I'm watching Abram and Sarah in a season of their life where they're probably carrying some weight and they're not actually exposing the weight to their significant other. They're just having conversations with one another but they're actually not exposing. Come on, we talked about this a, a couple of weeks ago that you have got to learn how to cast not hold. So now we're walking with the weight. I, I, wrote this in my, I, I, I wrote this in my notes because in a season of waiting and carrying the weight, sometimes we make the wrong decisions out of desperation. But, but actually learning as a married couple, and I'm getting ready to go a little bit deeper, if we learn how to sit and unpack with one another, Sit and unpack the hurt. Come on, somebody. Sit and unpack how, how, how you're loving me. Come on, somebody. Sit sit and, and unpack. And I say this a lot, and I'm learning this even more because my therapist said to me, come on, somebody. He said, Anthony, if you learn how to ask better questions, you will get better answers. So, so, so now we, we, we could be in a season of our life of two individuals on a journey together and they're waiting for fruit to come while carrying weight. What do you do when you're, when you're waiting for fruit to come but you're still carrying weight? Watch this family. Hey, can we talk? The best thing you can do in your marriage right now is say that. I really believe this. This is why we're in a society right now where you can go on Instagram, you can go on Facebook, you can go on the tabloids, and it seems as divorce is all around us. And I really believe this, family, is because now we're in a society that we don't want to have the conversations. We just want to continue to sweep things under the rug. We just want to continue to move on with life. And here's what I'm saying. If you're catching a picture, if you hold these jugs long enough, the jugs won't make you strong. The jugs will actually break you. And if we don't begin to invest into our marriage, come on, somebody, you're either going to build your marriage or the marriage is going to break you. And we got to have these type of conversations because, because, because if we're not watering the grass, come on, somebody, your grass would never get green. And I just wonder with Abram and Sarah, and, and go with me real quick because, because we got to have, because we're, we have to learn how to talk with heavy minds and heavy hearts. It's not about sweeping the thing under the rug. And, and, and here's, here's what I want to point out. I want to teach this a little bit. I want to teach this because even in this series right now, there could be five potential red flags in your marriage. Five potential. Let me speak it to myself because I'm right there with you. There could be five potential red flags 
in your marriage. And just like we're honoring the Super Bowl, I, I love how the officials throws the flag. Throw the flag on your marriage. That's okay. You're human. <laughs> These are two individuals who are constant evolving and trying to learn how to do life together. There are no perfect marriages out here. Say that to yourself. Say that to your spouse. There are no perfect marriages out here. But just as the official throws the flag, what do they do sometimes? They talk about the flag. Yeah. They conversate about the flag. What did you see? What did you catch from that angle? They begin to have a conversation yeah. around the potential. And these are five potential because if we, if we lose focus, I'm going in, family, we lose focus of these five potential red flags, we can easily lose focus of our marriage. We begin to look at other things, and we, we, we lose focus. You're taking notes. Go with me real quick. The first one is this, the red flag of assumption. Mmm, yeah. The Bible teaches us this way, family, and 1 Peter says, Likewise, you husbands, dwell with your wives according to knowledge, not according to assumption, according to Knowledge, Murray folks, sometimes we can tend to live in the land of complacency of assumption. I remember when me and Pastor Brenda first got married, her favorite color was blue. Years goes by, I never asked the question again. Now her favorite color is green, and I thought her favorite color was blue, and, and we now, now I'm in the land of assuming that her love language is something, but after years, and watch this family, because of certain things that happened, her love language was used to be blue, but now it turned to green. I'm using the metaphor of colors, but I want you to fill in the blank. Because now we're, we're walking with assumption and not walking with the progressive knowledge of knowing who your spouse is. We are two individuals who are not the same yesterday, and we won't be the same three months from now. We are constant evolving. So hear my heart on this, family. You have got to make sure you are a student of your spouse that you constantly have your eye on them, that you constantly are studying them, not, not, not like FBI-ish. I'm not, I'm not saying that. Don't go in investigation mode that you, that you, just, that you know everything. And I'm not saying that, but you, your eye is so much on them that you're studying them. You're studying their communication. You're studying their, their verbal communication. Watch this. But you're also studying their nonverbal communication. And if we can get comfortable with assumption that, that, that your significant other wants to be loved a certain way, we can, all, we can get caught in a place of losing a grip on our marriage. Are you following me, family? Because just like I said, that, that you got to be a student of her because we are evolving. You have to be a student of him. You have got to make sure that you keep your eye on them. Talk back to me today, family. It's quiet in here. I got you right where I want. I'm going into these points. Because if we can easily lose track of our spouse because our eye can be on so many other things. And then now we can begin to study work. We can begin to study other people. Let's go there. We can begin to study different idols in our life. And now we lose focus. I used to be like this early in my marriage that I finally cannot get to the place where I just master who my wife is. I know everything about her. I know, I know her ups and downs. I know how she communicates. And now where I thought I got to a place to master her, talk back to me, fellas, she evolved into somebody else. <laughs> and now I'm trying to figure out who is this person. I thought you used to say the way I said this, that, that you love this. And I thought the way that I did this, and you love this. No, no, no. We are evolving creatures. You have got to stay a student of the game. I'm learning that even my own marriage, you can't get too comfortable, Anthony, that you think that you know how to love her because she's constant evolving. Yeah. So the longer I keep my eye on her, I can see her changes in life. The longer I keep my eye on her, I can see the very things that make her go and the very things that bring her down. I can see when her love language begins to change, but if I live in the land of assumption a little bit too long, come on, somebody. 
So now I'm trying to live out my marriage through assumption rather than live out my marriage through knowledge. So the question is, how do I live out my marriage through knowledge? Hey, can we talk? Can we talk? Can, can we talk? Those, that, that, that question right there, because here's what I'm learning. I wrote this in my notes, and I said it already. And they love to say the grass is greener on the other side. No, 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 no. The grass is greener where you water it. So, so, so we have, we have hey, can we talk? It's an emphasis that I want to water this spot. Hey, hey, can we talk? The initiator, that's what I'm learning. Even men, hear me on this. We have got to learn how to be the initiator in this spot. We, we, we can't wait for our wives to come to us and say, hey, can we talk? We have got to learn how to lean into that uncomfortable place. Hey, babe, can we talk? I, I, I see the way, that, the way that you're communicating that it's a little bit off, or I see that we're disagreeing with here, we can't come. Hey, hey, I want to initiate this because I want to show you my heart that I care, and I want to water the spot where I feel as though it's running a little bit brown. Hey, can we talk? Number two, number two, number two. The red flag of too much talk and not enough listening. The red flag of too much talk and not enough listening. The flag, this is the flag of a relationship that's just a lot of chatterbox going on. There's a lot of talking, but nobody's listening. Everybody's trying to get their point across, and nobody's listening. We can easily say this in marriages and relationships, that communication is the, is the greatest thing that you can bring to a relationship. But the more I sit and learn and, and, and grow and being married for 17 years, it's really not about communication. We have to learn how to become masters at listening. If we learn how to listen, we will learn how to communicate better. See, we're trying to learn how to communicate better without actually learning how to listen. When we learn how to listen better, we can pick up the cues that's in our relationship. When we learn how to listen better, we don't have to live in a land of assumption. When we learn how to listen better, now we can live from a place of knowledge, and it's pretty much a cheat sheet for your marriage, because I've been listening to you. I just don't want to hear you. I want to listen to you. See, see, the Bible teaches us this way, family. Watch this in James 1.19. Let me give you scripture so that you just know that just, just coming from my heart. <laughs> know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to answer. I said it earlier, better questions should lead to better answers. Better answers should lead to me understanding you more. So in order to get to understanding, perhaps we have to listen better and talk less. Is there too much talking going on in your marriage and no one's listening? How do we ask better questions? See, I just don't want to preach it to you. I, I, I want you to think, family. I want you to think in your relationship. This is something that you should be writing down. Hey, Holy Spirit, help me ask better questions. Because if I ask better questions, the hope is it's going to get me closer to my significant spouse. The way that they think, the way that they, the way that they process, the way that they react. I, I don't want to do it from assumption. I want to do it from a place of knowledge, because if it's coming from a place of knowledge, now we're dealing with the reality of what's really going on. We don't want to deal with assumptions or a, 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 a perhaps, because now we're handling a perhaps, and we're using energy on a perhaps, and we're using effort on a perhaps, but we actually want to build and work with the reality of what's really going on. See, see, sometimes in our marriage, if we don't expose what's really going on, we're spending time dealing with the make-believe, the superficial. But when we expose it, we deal with the reality. And I said this last week, and God is still speaking it to me, and I'm going to say it again. He said, Anthony, I, can, I will no longer deal with the pretend you. I will only work on the real you. And if you're looking for God to move in your marriage, he's not going to move on the mask of your marriage. He's going to move on the realness and the rawness of your marriage. So if you're waiting for a breakthrough, he's not touching that mask. He's touching the paleness of right here of your heart. 
Hey, can we talk? Hey, can we talk? Sometimes your significant other may not like what you're getting ready to say. Hey, can we talk? Don't hold back. Lean into that uncomfortable place because the more you lean into that uncomfortable place, you allow the Holy Spirit through a door that you have always kept closed. Man, this is for somebody. This, this is for somebody because we, we can be in marriages so long behind a closed door that nobody else knows about but you and God. And God is such a gentleman that he's waiting for you to open it. But here it is. He's waiting for you to open it with your significant other. That when both of you guys sit down together, hey, can we talk? You begin to allow the Holy Spirit into a space where he's looking to water and give the increase and the breakthrough and the fruit that's getting ready to come in your life. But we can live behind a mask and a closed door and we learn how to listen better. We can actually help our spouse open a door that has been closed. Maybe God has called you for your significant other to help open a door that's been closed for years. A door that you have, a door that's been closed since childhood. That's where I want to go. I, I can't wait to equip night because, because there's closed doors from our upbringing that's been closed for years. And maybe your union together is for you, both of you guys to come together to listen to one another so that the other one who doesn't have the strength to open the door, you're standing right there with them in the deepness of your heart, in the deepness of your conversation to expose the real you. It doesn't make you a bad person. It makes you a real, authentic, genuine human being. It's okay not to be okay because God can work in that area and God can work on your marriage, but God is saying if you will open the door and let me in. I gave you a significant partner to sit with to help open the door. So sit with them. Sit together and open the door. But the only way we can help open the door, we got to listen better. My God, may God anoint your ears in this season to not speak better, but also listen better. Listen to the cues of the sound of your relationship. Listen to the ways of your relationship, and when the waves begin to start flowing and there's more turbulence, that means there's something that's shifted in the water. There's something that's off right now, and we're not going to sweep it under the rug. No, 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 no. No, we're not doing that. Hey, can we talk? You will never advance from that level. It is not a graduation in marriage. Single people, marriage is a beautiful thing but it requires work. You don't graduate with a hat on and a cap and, ground, cap and gown of, of this level. No, you stay a student, you never get to be the professor. Because as soon as you think you are the professor, you are losing grip on your wife and your husband. They are going to evolve in somebody else. I'm, oh, I, I, I gotta go here. Because, because, because now, if you don't listen now, you will listen later. Whew. If you don't listen now, you will listen later with your therapist. <laughs> If you don't listen now, you will listen later in divorce court. I want to go there. If you don't listen now, you will pay the money later. The money that you can be spending on a trip to Cancun. Come on, somebody. But now you're sitting, we got to talk about our indifferences. Ooh, I want to go there. Because I want to talk to the real. This is what's going on. If you don't listen now, you will listen later. So it's better to listen now where you can actually produce something so beautiful that's going to turn as something that God is getting ready to anoint. But we can be so stubborn and so frustrated and so comfortable that we don't want to listen, that we think that everything's okay. And it's okay not to be okay, but it's not okay not to listen. I want to go there, family. I know, I know it's real, but... This is where we're going. Number three, the red flag of impatience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it again. The red flag of impatience. Everybody wants everything now, but we fail to realize the beauty in waiting. Impatience, 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 impatience. I, oh, I, I can't wait till I get home, Julius. Because here's this, Julius. I... I got some wings and some ribs marinating. Oh, man. 
They've been sitting for a while, Julius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on over, man. They, it just tastes so much better, Julius, when they marinate. See, sometimes we love the air fry in the microwave, but my, my kids don't know anything about when that I, when I, when I grill gets out there and it might, and now it's not going to take 30 minutes. No, it's not going to take four hours. This thing been brewing and cooking for a while. The sauces and the ingredients and the spices, they, they take time to bond with one another. And when they begin to bond with one another, something else gets released because there was some time that had to take place. See, a lot of times we struggle in our marriage because we're looking for things to bond over moments and rather waiting for things to bond over time. So now we're like, our chemistry is off. Well, your chemistry is off because you're just sitting in moments and you're not sitting over time. And if you sit over time and with the, hey, can we talk? You're looking for a solution out of a one moment of, hey, can we talk? But God is actually not looking for you to catch the result. God is actually looking for you to find the beauty in the patience of sitting with one another. Can you, can, you, can you catch the beauty in the process rather than catching the beauty always in the result? Just like when we go on road trips with our kids, hey, enjoy the road trip. Daddy, are we there yet? No. <laughs> look outside and look at that tree. That's what we did. And then have a tablet. Personal, personal, personal. But I, I want them to enjoy the process because when you enjoy the process, you learn so much about each other that you, what you can't get just if God just gives you the answer and the result because he's actually giving you tools. Watch this. That's actually going to last longer than that result or that answer that you're waiting for. That he's teaching you how to communicate. That he's teaching you how to process together. That he's teaching you how to come together and marinate together. And sometimes we can be impatient with one another or impatient with the process. But I'm telling you, if you become patient and work the thing that you're supposed to work, you're going to catch a beauty that you, can, you will only catch in the process. And when you catch it in the process, it's going to teach you how to do battle for the things that's coming down the road. Now you're getting equipped, and now you're getting weapons, and now you know how to fight this warfare. Here's how you know how to fight this warfare, because we sat long enough with the same weapon, and we chose how to fight this battle together. It's not always about the result. God is trying to teach you the beauty in the middle. The beauty in the middle. So, 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 but when I, when I think about it, because sometimes you could be waiting on your significant other to get better in a specific spot or area. And I, here's what I'm teaching you, is that we have, we have to learn how to wait for our significant other. Wait healthy. Watch this. Because when we wait and understand that God is in the middle, that God is working with us, we're not putting our trust in our significant other, or can I say this? We're not putting our faith in our significant other. We're putting our faith in God because our relationship is built on God. And if God said that he's going to bless our marriage, God is going to bless our significant other. He's going to bless us. He's going to teach us. But that, re that revelation and that transformation only comes when we come together. Hey, can we talk? It comes when it comes together. Write this down, family. Patient and well-doing is the fruit of faith. Impatience is the fruit of unbelief. I love this Psalm 37, verse 7. I, I really believe this is for a couple. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Not a lot of movement. Be patient. But here's this, well, patient is a verb, patient is, a, waiting is a verb that while you're waiting, we got to make sure we're giving our spouse something to wait for. We got to give them, we, we got to show them, so I, I say this a lot, even in me, me, me and Pastor Brenda Merge, we have to, we got to learn how to count the gradual gains in our merge. I, 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 I'm, I'm here in this season of my life. 
you're praying for me to get here, but I know I'm not here right now. I'm still somewhere over here, but, but can we count the gradual gains? See, sometimes we just want to focus on the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we just want to focus on the Super Bowl that I need you to do this better, and I need you to think this better, and I need you to be there for me better, and I need you to love me better. And we're just looking at the Super Bowl of our relationship. And we miss that in between. We miss that we used to be here, but my gosh, it's February and we're here. So now we, we, we don't learn how to practice the beauty of the winds. We, we, we're, we're practicing a repetition in our life where we only celebrate Super Bowls. And if you live in a season of your life where you will only celebrate Super Bowls, you will always stay pretty much miserable in your marriage. Because now you're always waiting for the next win, the next big win. Throw the confetti. We got to wait the anniversary. We got to wait the birthday. Come on, somebody. We got to wait till the holiday. You're, you're waiting for the next big thing, and God is actually setting you up week to week with gradual gains. Gradual gains in your marriage. The way that you speak has gotten better. The way that you listen has gotten better. The way that you process with me has gotten better. There are some gradual gains in here in your marriage. We have to learn how to sit with one another and affirm one another. Catch this. Ladies, come on. Woo your man. Woo your king. Build him up with your words. Even when he don't get it right, come on, somebody. Build him up. Build him up with your words. Fellas, same thing. To tell your queen how beautiful she look. Can I say this? And, not, and don't, don't get mad, ladies. Even when you don't like that dress, you know what you're supposed to say. I know I'm going to get in trouble when I get home. Pray for me. But you suppose, we're, we're there to love on them and build each other up. Sit with them. Let me keep on. Let me keep going. Is it good? Is it good? Talk back to me. Is it good? The fourth one, the fourth one. I got five points today. I know it's a big Sunday. You thought you was getting out of here early. I caught you. The fourth one, but I'm going to go quick. I'm going to go quick. The fourth one. Because this is important. The red flag of unforgiveness. It is impossible, family, to sustain a lifelong relationship with someone without practicing forgiveness. This is who we are as Christians. This is who we are as we walk out. Jesus Christ modeled this for us, what, what, what forgiveness is all about. Father, please forgive them for what they do not know. We, we have the greatest example of what it means to walk in flesh and live out a life of forgiveness. But, but we're in a culture right now that wants to cancel everybody. So our culture teaches us if you make one mistake, cancel them out. If you say the wrong thing, cancel them out. If you do the wrong thing, throw them to the <laughs> There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go, we good. But here, catch my point. Because the culture can teach us that if you make a mistake, then you're going to get canceled. But so now we live in our marriage trying to aim for perfection, and we don't aim for realness. So now we're aiming and we're holding certain things back. Because if we be real with one another, it's going to show our true colors. And if we show our true colors, they're actually going to judge us. And now we're not able to actually walk in the realness of who we are. But here's what God is saying that we have got to make sure that we're both practicing forgiveness. Because when we both practice forgiveness, it shows that this is a safe place for me to come and drop what I'm going through. Are you following me? Because if we don't have forgiveness in our marriage... We won't see that it's a safe place for us to actually drop what we're going through. So now we do this, family. We go back to the water. Instead of dropping it, we hold it. We hold with frustration. We hold with disappointment. 
We, we, we hold with confusion instead of dropping in a safe place of knowing that if we do wrong, our spouse is going to forgive us because we both practice this. We sit with one another. Hey, can we talk? It is an ongoing thing that we have in our relationship. We're practicing and we're modeling it. So now this leads to forgiveness. Can I say it this way, family, in Colossians chapter 3? Watch this. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, Holy, dearly love, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentle, and patience. Burn with one another and forgiving one another. My gosh. What clothes are you wearing in this season of your marriage? Put it on. Put on compassion. Or, or are we wearing the clothes of animosity, disappointment? The, the, the clothes of trying to learn how to forgive. And we can only truly forgive when we sit long enough. Or are we sitting with clothes by ourselves trying to practice forgiveness? But if we come together and sit with one another, we can actually put on the right clothes of forgiveness. Hey, can we talk? My last point is this. My last point is this. The red flag of a closed heart. The red flag of a closed heart. I have a love and hate relationship with my chiropractor. I, 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 I appreciate how I feel when I leave out of there. But to be honest, Dr. Andrew, sometimes when I'm in there and he, and he cracks my back a certain way, it, it, it doesn't feel too good. And the point that I, I, I'm making here is that I remember when I first started my sessions together with him. And after the first couple of sessions, I, I, I felt the relief, but I was so tense. I was so tense, Osa. Oh, so I, I was tensed up. I, he couldn't really do what he wanted to do because I was so tense. And he said, Anthony, in order to get this relief, you have got to learn how to relax. But, 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 but there, there's so many blockages, there's so many knots, and there, there's so many things. And he, he said, in order to get this relief, because I need you to relax, I need you. So he said, actually, if you don't relax, it's not going, actually going to open up. But I said, hey, doc, the last time I came in here, you know, it, it hurts so bad that now I, I flinch every single time you, you go to put your hands on me. And every time that you go to put your hands on me, I, 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 I close up. I, I don't know how to open up. My, my body just naturally reacts because I'm thinking about the last time you actually hurt me. And now that I hear what you're saying, I hear what you're saying about the result that needs to come. But my body has taught myself to go into a self-protective mode. Then now I have to protect myself based on the knowledge of something that happened in the past. And so now I hope you're catching me. I hope you're catching me. Because this is the image of a lot of marriages in, in life right now. Is that we, we, we have self-awareness uh, and knowledge of something in the past. And now God is trying to open us up into something greater, but we're always in self-protective mode. We have to protect ourselves. We, have, we, we got we to protect ourselves. And, and I just wonder right now, and here's what God is saying. Here's what, catch this, Psalms 51. It says, Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Here's why I chose that scripture, because this is what God is saying. God is saying, even though your mind would go there, I need your heart and your mouth to go somewhere else. Your mind can go off on back on previous pain, but I need your mind to go to where I'm actually taking you. So in marriages right now, we can, we can sit with one another and behind a closed heart, how do we open our heart back to love? Are you following me? Are you following me? Because, because I want to put your mind right there as we get ready to close. What's the closed heart in your marriage right now? 
What's the thing that you guys normally wouldn't talk about that the Holy Spirit is nudging you and saying, hey, can we talk? Because maybe you're flinching just like I was in the chiropractor. Maybe you're, maybe you're tensing up and it's a little bit uncomfortable. Come on, somebody. The better we learn how to live in a land of uncomfortable, the better we will learn how to open ourselves up. You can't live in a land of comfortable comfortability in your marriage all the time. Because there are things in the uncomfortable realm that can only get touched, that can only get a breakthrough, that can only get exposed when you travel into that land. But we would rather live in a land uncomfortable and expect God to go into the land uncomfortable and do the work while we stay over here and comfortable. Let's stand to our feet. Five potential flags. Five potential flags. So my thought to you today, family, what, what's, the, what's the flag on your play? What's the flag on your marriage? And as we get ready to, to pray it out, this scripture in Ezekiel came to my heart. As I was studying, it says Ezekiel 37. It's a familiar text. But I love it where it says in verse 2, he said, He led me among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very dry. I love the scripture. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? Son of man, can this marriage live? Live. You ever been in a season of your life? Because even right now, we live in a society where there are a lot of marriages that are drying up. Come on. 2022, every single week, your family, celebrities, or, 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 or maybe you're in a season where you're walking through divorce even right now. And the enemy wants to say, that's your identity. That's who you are. You're just another number in America. Look at the church. Look at the pastors. Can these bones really live? Can your marriage survive that? Can you really make it to five years? 10 years, can, can, can nobody, you don't know anybody that survived. Can this marriage really live? And here's what God spoke to me even about my own marriage. He said, and he said to me, son, can these bones live? And I answered, you answered, not God, but you, husband, you answered. Wife, you answered. Oh, Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I want to pray this out, family. And as we get ready to go back into our fourth song, the reason why we lifted up the scripture in Psalms, it says sing the praise because Maybe God is saying that it's time to change your language about your marriage. It's time to actually speak over your marriage and use your words to build what God is getting ready to do in your marriage. Have, yes, have the tough conversations. I know this is a tough word. It needs to be tough because your enemy is tough. And your enemy is speaking other things and your enemy is not going away. Your enemy is not going to give up. But here's the beautiful thing where I love about his word is that God has given you something that his enemy does not have. And God will give you the strength and the endurance and the character to defeat the enemy because the enemy cannot last a Christian, a believer that has endurance. 
So how do you have endurance? Speak his word. How do you have endurance? Get in his word. How do you have endurance? Surround yourself with other believers that can speak into your life. When you don't have any more words to speak, when you're going through, you got some brothers that can love on you. When you're going through, you got some sisters that you can call and say, my husband is getting on my nerves, baby girl. Come pray for me. But a lot of times we sit in isolation and we run empty and now we are agreeing with a lie. And that lie has now become your truth. And now the truth is actually what you speak every day. But God is actually saying, I need you to take you back to your roots. Not to what you see, but with what you know that's in your heart. My God said he will never leave us or never forsake us. My God said that he will always be here with us. My God said that he will, we are the head and not the tail. Come on, somebody. My God said we are overcomers. My God said that we are planted on a firm foundation. And even when the rain come, and even when the storms come, my God, me and my baby, we are still going to be here lifting up our name, lifting up the name of God, lifting up Jesus Christ, praising his name. Devil, you can do whatever you want to do, but we will not be shaken because our God is here. Speak over your marriage. Proclaim the beauty over your marriage. That this would be the best year that our marriage has ever seen. Blessings from everywhere. Breakthroughs from everywhere. Miracles from everywhere. Overcoming from everywhere. That this will be our best year. God is changing your language right now. God is changing your vocabulary right now. You need to look at one another and don't wake the Valentines and say, you are my rib. You are my woman. You are my man. Come on, somebody. You are the, the apple of my eye. Come on. And then you look at the enemy and say, but God. Yeah, 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 yeah. You thought you had one. Come on. We're going to be getting ready to go back and worship, but I can look over this audience and I can feel the weight. I can feel the tension and I can feel the struggle and I can feel that you're feeling like you're going to give up. But the best thing that you can give your significant other right now is say, baby, I'm not giving up on you because God ain't give up on me. Baby, I'm going to be here for you because God ain't give up on me. I love you. I adore you. And we are going to give God our best in this year. Our best days are ahead because our God has gone ahead. You serve a God that works from the end to the beginning. Heavenly Father, we know that you have things stored up for every relationship in here. We know our best days are ahead. We know that we are the head and we are not the tail. So for every relationship that's in here, we ask that you cover, that you anoint, that you touch, that you give fresh revelation, that whatever the enemy will have a hold on, Lord God, we ask that the floodgates be broken right now. We ask that the anointing be flowing right now. We ask that you touch every hardened heart, every closed heart, every heart that doesn't know how to be open. We ask that you move and touch and deliver and you bring of freshness. We pray right now that there's a new song that's being lifted up in every marriage of this house. There will be a song that's lifting up the banner of Jesus. There will be a song that's lifting up a new type of love. Show them that they love one another. Show them how to have tough conversations. Show them how to unpack and say, hey baby, can we talk? We seal this in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. He is a way maker. He is a way maker. Even when I don't see it, you're working. When I don't feel it, you're working. He is a way maker. And this is a continued part of our worship where we acknowledge him as a way maker. I love this scripture. 2 Corinthians 9, 7, but I love it in the Amplified. It says, let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver 
and delights in the one whose heart is in his gift. What I love about this version of the verse is that God gives us his footprint, that it's thoughtfully and with purpose, and that he delights in the one whose heart is in his gift. He doesn't say how much. He invites us to sit with him, to hear his thoughts and purpose for our giving. And so as we take a moment just to ask for that purpose, he delights in our cheerful giving. This church is a cheerful giver. It cheerfully gives to support this community. It cheerfully gives to help diminish food insecurities for our local schools. It cheerfully gives to make sure that people can transition out of homelessness. It cheerfully gives so that these doors can be open every Sunday and we can come and hear the word so that our online friends can join us in worship. So let us be cheerful givers in whatever it is that God is speaking to our hearts. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are our way maker. Thank you, Lord God, that you, you open the windows of heaven and you pour out your blessings upon us so that what you give to us, we can then turn around and give back to serve your kingdom. Father God, continue to bless this ministry and all that it does in its cheerful giving. And we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, church. Easy one for you. Show of hands. Who knows that groups are live? Yay! Leah, are you part of a group? Part of a group. Uh, part of uh, leading a group. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. So we're part of groups. I'm leading a group, too. Lots of you probably know that groups, as you just showed by your hands, are live. But if you didn't know, groups are live. You can find your people using the QR code. Um, there's tons of options. There's dinner groups. There's hiking. There's mosaic art. There are some ladies who painted last night. I painted my painting. You can actually tell what it is. <laughs> so sign up for a group. Um, we'd love to get you in community. That's what we're all about here. If it hasn't been clearly communicated to you, we would love to get to know you in a group setting um, because that's what we're all about. We do God together, and groups is where you can start doing that. Speaking of groups, ladies, y'all have smartphones, bust them out. I got one just for your man, <laughs> but we all know that you keep the schedule, so let's go ahead and write this down. <laughs> February 24th at 7 p.m., here's a QR code for you, send your man to Men's midnight. Night. Yes. <laughs> send him out there, do what dudes do, whatever that is. And and do it in community because that's healthy for their relationships with each other and your relationship at home. So man night, um, 7 p.m., get out there and do awesome things and get a community. And yeah, thanks for groups. Thanks for you being a group. And yes, thank thanks you for your prayer. You want to pray us out? Yes, I shall do that. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you, Lord. Let us have a blessed week in Jesus' name. Amen.